Well, it's cold, it's winter, and all I want to do at this time of year is just get some bites, get that elastic stretching, get that float tip going under. I don't care what I catch, I just want to catch some fish. And it's nice at this time of year to catch carp, tench, bream, perch, it doesn't matter. Um, and it's nice not to know what the next bite will be. So I've come to one of my favourite venues, one of my childhood venues, and this is, um, we're at Bishop's Bowl Fishery in the heart of Warwickshire. And this is Walworth's Lake. Now, it's a lake that I've not fished for, well, I can't remember the last time I fished it, it might be 20 years ago. It's, it's undergone a lot of changes in that time, um, but it's still a lovely looking lake. And I know they've been catching bream and the odd tench and stuff, even at this time of year. So hopefully we can catch one or two of those, but I don't mind as long as we get some bites. And it's no surprise, I can see at least two foot, probably three foot down. It's, a, it's an old quarry, so it's a clear venue. Um, it's not your average sort of muddy puddle and it's a nice reason why I like fishing. It's a bit of a challenge this place, it's not the easiest place to get bites at times but it's a lovely venue, nice scenery and um, brings back a lot of memories fishing here so hopefully we can catch a few fish. Well the main bait today has to be maggots. I wouldn't come to a winter session like today without them really and I suppose we could just bring a pint or so of maggots and that would be ample for what we're going to do today but I want to cover my bases I want to try a few things as well I love trying different baits and stuff so I've also brought some casters it's completely optional today it's very clear here and I find casters work particularly well in clear water and also if there's any quality roach about and if you're getting bitted out by tiny little fish sometimes feeding casters instead of maggots is better but it's optional really. I'm going to feed casters on one swim but I'm hoping to catch on maggots more than anything. Um, if it's really hard I've got some pinkies, there's only about a quarter of a pint there. Um, single or double pinky, I've got reds and fluoros there. Fluoros really stand out well if you're really struggling to get a bite you can normally catch a brooch on a, on a fluoro pinky but also it's sometimes why pinkies aren't so clever because a tiny little roach can grab your fluoro pinky before it even reaches the bottom. So, um, and then I've just got some dead maggots and dead pinkies as well, which I just killed off this morning. And they, they'll go in the, in the ground bait and um, they shouldn't break up the balls or anything. They just help encourage the fish to just sort of forage around. And also being in, inert and not wriggling around, sometimes a dead bait is better than a live bait if you're getting bitted out by smaller fish. And to complement that, I've just got a nice dark fine ground bait. So um, my go-to mix for any sort of commercial silverfish application is, is um, Swim Stim Silverfish Dark and a mil Black Milled Expander. Um, and if it was milder and a bit more coloured, that's all I'd be using today. But because it, things have gone so cold and so difficult, I need to cut it really. And by that, I mean I need to dilute it. So um, I've got two options. One is, is um, a sort of canal style ground bait, which has got very, very low feed. This is frenzied hemp. It's got very, very low feed. So I can, I'm, I've put about a third of my mix is that. And that just helps cut out the fish meal strength really. And the other ingredient is damp lean. Now, um, a lot of people think you only use damp lean for fishing with bloodworm and joker in, but actually it's a great bait if there's any chance of skimmers and if the water's a bit clear. Damp lean really clouds up. It's, a, it's like a clay-based sort of soil, and it, but there's no feed whatsoever, so it helps dilute the mix. So if you're feeding a ball like that, you know you're not feeding as much feed as if it was 100% sweet fish meal. Um, but the beauty of that as well is when the fish kick it up, it will cloud up a little bit as well, especially skimmers. Skimmers that particularly like damp lean. So I don't always put it in my mixes, but if there's any sort of depth, we've got six foot of water in front of us, and if there's any chance of skimmers, then sometimes a bit of damp lean can really help um, cloud the peg up a little bit. Um, the only other thing I do as well is because I, I'm expecting it to be a hard day, is I've actually passed all my mix for a flower sieve before mixing just to get rid of any sort of bigger particles I don't want anything to feed them up plus I don't want any dry bits popping and fizzing off the bottom that could potentially take the fish off the bottom when I want them down feeding so uh, just a quick sieve you don't lose too much but it's it's nice to get a lovely fine mix and that's it as far as the bait goes we could just fish with maggots and ground bait today me being me, I've complicated it a little bit, but it's just a few pinkers, a few dead baits, and a few casters as options. But they're what I'm hoping to catch on. Well, I'm just going to start feeding. I've plumbed up four swims today, 
Two swims at 10 metres and two swims at 14 metres, uh, left and right. I love to fish two swims left and right so I can swap between the two and try different things. I'm only going to feed three of those four at the start and the fourth one I'll feed as and when. Um, we might not feed it at all or it, what I learned from those other three swims might teach me how to feed the fourth swim. So, um, but the main thing I'm going to be feeding on two of the swims is just one ball of ground bait like that and, and then just a bit of loose on top which is going to cascade down. Now these have got um, dead pinkies and a few dead maggots in, that's all. And I might just put a pinch of live maggots over the top as well. Um, it's not an exact science really. But one ball like that, it's really cold. Um, the water is really clear. I can see a good two foot down at least. It's, a, it's an old quarry list, so it is a bit clearer than some venues. And we're fishing in about six foot of water. So, so one ball like that should hopefully go straight down but cloud up a little bit um, plus half of that is is going to be damp lean anyway so there's uh, there's actually half as much feed in that as what it looks so one of those on two of the lines one of the short lines one of the long lines and then my second short swim my second 10 meter swim all i'm going to do is put i don't know 30 40 casters and a i don't know a dozen maggots over the top and no ground bait, no nothing. Sometimes the fish will definitely come over the ground bait, sometimes they'll run a mile from it. So I'm covering my bases there. I've got one short line with just loose feed casters and maggots and one, and one line with ground bait, dead pinkies, live maggots, could fish anything over that. Um, so that's it. Um, without further ado, I think I better just pot in and try and get fishing. Right, I've been flicking a few casters, just literally threes and fours, sometimes just a couple of maggots as well, just to keep some of it falling through the water. I think at this time of year, and especially with it being so clear, the fish are just off the bottom and they're just swimming up and down off the bottom mid water and you've got to really tempt them down to feed, which is why I'm just dripping in threes and fours of bait nice and lightly. Once I start getting a few bites, I can up the feed and drop, drop the feed, but at the moment, we're 25, 30 minutes into the session. I've not had so much as a sniff yet, which doesn't surprise me too much. It's important to fish these short lines for a good half an hour anyway, to let that long line settle. That's my banker line. That's where I really want to catch, but I don't want to go on it straight away. I'm going to leave it half an hour. So I've gone left and right. Both swims are exactly the same depth. So I can use the same rig on both swims and just flip between the two. I've started on a single maggot. I've tried double pinky. I've tried two dead pinkies, which falls a bit more uh, wafts a bit more down. I've tried a single caster. Um, I'm not bothered with a double maggot or anything yet. I feel if I can't catch on a single, I don't think I'll catch on a double. So I'm trying to stack all the odds in my favour just to get a bite. Um, I'm not too worried that I haven't had a bite yet. I'm going to keep keep this loose fed line just ticking over, just really lightly until we know what's going on. I don't want to suddenly start filling in bait too soon. And we just keep dripping it in, and I'm going to leave that right hand ground bait swim untouched for a little bit um, as far as putting in extra bait but now's the time to just have a look um, on that longer line and see if there's any fish settled there. Uh, first fish of the day, <laughs> great big rud. It came in like a skimmer, and then as soon as it saw me, it's, it's got a bit livelier. Just in the top lip, really delicate bite. It was a bit of a surprise that to be catching a rud that nice. It'd be nice if I caught a net full of those, but uh, I'm hoping for a mixed bag, so uh, it's not very often you start off with a nice big rud though, is it? Cracking. Well, it's just run through the rigs. I've only got two set up today, a light rig and a heavy rig. Um, and that's just float and shot in. Um, the actual main line and hook length and hook are all exactly the same on both rigs. They're both um, to fish. Um, it's exactly six foot on the 14 meter swim and it's, it's about four or five inches shallower on the 10 meter swims. So I can use the same rig on both just by moving it up and down the line four or five inches. Um, now they're both on 014 um, Power Micron mainline, which is my go-to sort of line 
um, for commercial silverfish at this time of year. Um, I want something reasonably robust. So if I do hook a rogue carp or something breaks, the main line won't part. Um, I'll, it'll just be my hook length. Um, I think 016 is a little bit fierce. Um, you lose a little bit of control, but 014 seems to be about the optimum size for me for sort of winter um, cold water, water silverfish. Um, and the hook length on both is um, 010 power micron. Um, I catch no end of silvers on that. Um, and they both end up with uh, an 18 prototype um, Teflon coated hook. Very, very sharp, perfect. Um, for maggot, caster, double pinky, you can fish anything on an 18. If it was a bit warmer, if we're into spring, I wouldn't hesitate to use a 16. But this time of year, a little bit more finesse, so I, I'm going to use an 18 today. Um, both matched up with um, 6 to 8 uh, slick elastic. We want to catch everything that swims. It's for a full top two kit, so there's going to be loads of elastic out if we hook them at big, but still some elastic out if we hook them at small as well. And obviously, we've got a side puller kit there as well. So. I'm confident of getting anything out that swims, whether it's 10 ounces or an ounce or 10 pound out on six to eight elastic at this time of year, as long as they don't snag me. So, uh, but we want loads of elastic out if we hook a fish because we don't want to bump fish and they're not going to be swimming too much at this time of year. So we don't want to bump any, um, especially like soft mouth skimmers and things like that. So, um, but as far as the floats go, I could say everything's the same, elastic, mainline, hook length, hook, everything's the same, but on the heavy rig, I've got a 4B16 Malman Speedy Titan um, and on the lighter rig I've got a 4B14 that's a Malman Secret. Um, one slightly slimmer with a carbon stem and with strung out shot in the bottom half. They're all number 11s in the bottom half of the rig for a nice slow fall through the water, especially good in clear water when you're trying to attract fish um, visually. Um, if we're getting small fish trouble, if the wind gets up or if we just want to bomb the bait down a little bit more, then I go for the heavier float, which is a 4B16, which is about half a gram. Um, these both have a 1.2 mil solid plastic tip. I love a plastic tip this time of year with small baits like maggots and casters and pinkies. Um, and this, the heavier rig is shotted um, in what I call a double bulk fashion, so um, which is basically a positive bulk of number eights. What's that? About 18 inches from the hook, and then I've got three number tens, four inches from the hook. I've got a four inch hook length on this one and a six inch on the other, both 010 to an 18. But um, the four inch hook length just helps to magnify um, lift bites and everything. So this rig is designed to bomb down. I'm going to fish it slightly over depth. And I fully expect a few lift bites as when a fish picks up the hook bait, it's going to dislodge those those three number 10 shot there. Um, so it's a great bait. It's a great rig for big quality fish. Um, and also when you've got a lot of nuisance smaller fish in the swim. So I don't know if this rig will come in handy or not. Um, my main rig that I'm certainly going to start on is my strung out rig, which has just got number 11 strung all the way down in the bottom half of the rig. Just nice and sensitive and uh, a lot of finesse to this rig, so which will catch everything that swims. Well, I don't know what this is yet. I was just saying that I've not seen a, a carp or a tench yet, and it might be one of those, or it could be a foul look bream or a big perch. It seems to have stopped swimming a bit now, but it's it's uh, there's plenty of six or eight elastic out anyway. I don't know what it is yet, but we'll soon see because it's so clear we'll be able to see it under the water. What is it? Oh, it's a oh, it's a good bream. Well, <laughs> it fought the way it went off. I thought it was a tench, but it's not. It's a good bream, and I'm even using me me puller. I think it's in the mouth as well. Oh, it might just be, or near the mouth. <laughs> I was just thinking I might have caught a tench, because there's definitely tench in here, but it might just be that little bit too cold and clear for him today. Gotta let him under the water. Yeah. <laughs> when it's that clear, you might as well. Oh, he is, he's just in the wing, but he's a good fish anyway. So they all count. That's probably the best fish of the day. Should I hold him up for the camera? 
there you are, nice fish. Great sport. Well, I've just caught a nice bream, and as you can see, sign of catching a decent skimmer or bream is a bit of slime on the line. Now the maggot's still wriggling, and some people might go straight out and try and catch another on that, but you must get rid of every single last bit of that slime. And sometimes I see people going out with a little blob on the spade there around the whippings. Get every last little bit off. I think it stands out like ectoplasm. <laughs> and, uh, and fish can definitely see it. I've seen underwater footage and I'm sure fish can see it. So I just normally can just flick it off and there you are. But get every single last bit of slime off your hook length before you go back out and you will catch more fish. Right, it's just gone a bit quiet now on those two long lines. I've, I've had a few skimmers, um, but my last fish was a perch. I had to wait a little while for it. Um, I've gone through the card with hook baits and everything. They, they, they're crying out for a top up, I think, those fish. So, um, and when to top up and how to top up is, is something you can only sort of work out on the day, really. Um, which is another reason why I've got two swims. I can try two different things. So, um, if in doubt, I'll probably put in a nugget, sort of just a loose sort of palm size squeeze of a ground bait, a few dead maggots, a few dead pinkies still in there. Even though we've not caught on those, I don't think they're doing any harm in helping to hold and attract fish, even though we're still fishing a, a single red maggot over the top. So a little nugget like that's going to go in on my right hand swim. But as an experiment, I'm just going to put in an even smaller nugget on my left hand swim just to see which one might be better on the day and it's it's not about not necessarily about today either it's about learning for future sessions down here and you know for, if i was ever on a match here do they want little tiny nuggets or do they want slightly bigger nuggets you know it's all about trying to put things in the in the bank for uh, for future sessions and everyone says it comes with experience where well, you get your experience from trying different things and having multiple swims lets you try different things so i'm going to top of each swim oh and i'm going to just put in a little bit of loose as well on top of me, uh, me right hand swim. Just got a bit of cascade going down as well. I'm gonna see if that works, but a little nugget in the left swim, a bit of a, a slightly more generous amount in the right swim. We'll see which one's best. Oh, this water is clear. Uh, yes. <laughs> well, that's skimmer number four now. I don't know if it's a bream or a skimmer. They're very pale, but they're quite big fish. It's a couple of pound that. As you can see from that side, I don't know if you can just see that. Single maggot. I've tried doubles, not a bite. I've tried caster, I've tried pinky, everything, but good old single maggots doing the trick. Let's pop them in. But that's four now, and probably nearly two hours into the session, I didn't think I was going to catch a skimmer. It was like, where, where are they? And all of a sudden, bang, 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 three on the bounce. And I've had to wait a little while, and then I've just caught number four. So they have turned up. Um, it seems to me that they want a little bit of bait falling through the water just to get them into the peg and to attract them. With being so clear, I think they can just follow it down. Um, I've topped up two or three times with just little nuggets of ground bait and I've put, I've opened up both my 40 meter swims as well now. Initially I just loose fed or potted in loose uh, maggots and casters on my left hand swim when I started that. But I've caught that skimmer after putting a little ball of ground bait in. So that's, that's sort of confirmed what I thought they wanted a bit of ground bait. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm quite positive now. So, so they, we were catching little perch, little roach like this. It's like, where are these skimmers? And all of a sudden they're, they're there now. But the other thing I've noticed is I've had to fish probably a good three to four inches over depth as well. If I didn't fish that far over depth, they were, you'd get a little indication and it was almost like they were rejecting it. So by fishing that little bit further over depth, 
it seems to be that, that they're taking it a little bit more confidently and then you're getting a decent bite. So all four skimmers have come when I've just gone that little bit further over depth and every single one on a single maggot. I think I'm going to make that my last fish. Nice chunky perch. Lovely colours on them at this time of year. He was a greedy one, look at him. Snaffle that maggot. But the light's starting to go now, so I think it's time to call it a day. See what we've caught. Caught plenty of fish. He'll let me unhook him. Nice fish to end on. Let's see what we've caught. Well, there you go. A lovely winter catch. A real variety of species in there. Roach, perch, even that lovely rud at the start. It's worth coming just for that fish, I think. So, uh, but hopefully I've shown you a few tips and tricks to maximize your catches at this time of year. Very, very simple fishing. And, uh, but if you work at it, feed a few different swims and uh, don't forget those maggots. And uh, hopefully you can catch a nice, bag of fish just like this.